in magazines in the studio right now, Ryan and Kelly. And so if oh, we're looking for some indoor activities <laughs> this weekend, you guys always know what's happening around Salt Lake. We see in magazines boxes everywhere, and uh, those are always fun to grab. But uh, so tell us with theaters, some fun places to go this weekend, oh, some shows. I've been seeing a lot of plays lately. Um, one that I saw recently was uh, Homeschool Musical, The Desert Star. I haven't Star. heard of that. Yeah, it's, they always have parodies, so that's their new one. And um, so it's, you know, based on High School Musical, but they have a few other characters in there, like Napoleon Dynamite, who is just hilarious. Is it adult cast or yeah, kids it's, cast? Yeah, it's adults um, playing teenagers and uh, really funny. So since, uh, Singing, since you dancing. homeschool your kids, you so probably they, relate they, to it a lot. Are they making fun <laughs> of homeschoolers or just kind of having it's fun with it? It's kind of, um, the homeschoolers are, are the champions. They, they have to prove that... Um, homeschooling is not destroying uh, arts for the, for the children, so they have to put on a, a show to prove to a senator that he shouldn't outlaw homeschool oh. because it, it doesn't destroy arts for the, for the kids. So, okay, that sounds yeah. really good. And that's playing Desert Star? Desert Star, yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give it? I would probably give it about an eight, I an would eight. say. That's yeah. pretty good. So I would check that one out. And then there's a dark play at Salt Lake Acting Company, which also involves teenagers, but is, as the title implies, much darker. Um, it's uh, about a 14-year-old boy who tries to impersonate a girl on the internet to kind of mess with this 16-year-old boy. So. And that's never happened before in real life. No, no, okay. never. <laughs> so, but it's really cool how they stage it with uh, all the computer screens behind the kids, and you know they'll be talking to each other online, but they'll stage this by facing out towards the audience and, and talking that now, way. Is it family-friendly? No, no, that one is not family-friendly. Okay. That is adult themes for sure. So if you want to go a little bit darker out, there's that. But that one's just great. I mean, the whole audience by the end was just like, really, whoa. Kind of like, wow. It kind of kind of blows your your mind. You're like, they went there, really. Wow. So any other yeah. theater productions you've seen? Um, let's see. I'm like? seeing Stop Kiss next weekend on the 13th. That's at Pygmalion, but I haven't seen and that, that yet. What That's um, Pig, it's Pygmalion Theater Company, but they're producing that at the at Rose Wagner. Um, and then, uh, at, of course, at your Egyptian theater, there's a funny thing happened on the way to the forum is coming up. Uh -huh. So I'll be seeing that. So lots of good stuff going on in the theater world. Okay, wonderful. And um, we were just talking about new games that came yeah, out, Ryan. Yeah. We had new uh, news. You know, you had Lord of the Rings that came out, and uh, I didn't enjoy it that much, to be honest. Um, wasn't it, what you expected? It's, well, no, it, it kind of was what I expected, it, but not exactly as good as I expected, if that makes sense. Um, the online play and the multiplayer options are actually pretty entertaining, but um, for those of us who, who would rather not deal with the, the masses, um, it's not that much fun to play on your own. Uh, there is another game called Skate 2 that came out, which is a skateboarding game. Um, it's a sequel to the, uh, the game Skate, uh, and it's actually probably the best skateboarding game I, that's, that's come out yet. Um, it's, it's really quite entertaining, and, and I don't like skateboarding games at all. <laughs> and uh, I, I still had a lot of fun with it, so I, I think that said quite a bit. Uh, and the reviews have been great. Uh, uh, if you played the first one, this is kind of an extension of the, the first one with a, a few more added aspects, but uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Probably good timing with, you know, summer coming, everybody wants to get out there and skateboard and kind of get back into it through video well, games, and right? it's, Well, and it's funny for me, because that's part of the reason why I never really liked the, the whole skateboarding as a game sort of thing, is because if you wanted to skateboard, why don't you just go out and skateboard? But uh, I guess can't always do that in Utah, yeah, guess, especially well, in Park you know, City. I, maybe I'm. I don't they're know. trying to get that. They're trying to make that happen in Park City, though. A lot of the kids have been trying to petition. I think the city up here to make it a year-round. Get a skate park or something yes. going. Yeah. Yes, but you know, I mean, it seems like they either skateboard or they snowboard. And I was know. in a video store recently, and I saw Sean White's uh, snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And would you, have you checked that one out? The no, snowboarding. I, have not, no. I just loved it that he's like tossing all the snowballs and. Uh, but uh, I guess it didn't get really great reviews as far as a game. I, you know, I, I, I read a few things about it. Um, you know, it's really hard to make a good action sports game because um, a lot of them just become very repetitive and what they refer to as button mashers where, okay, you just learn how to hit those three buttons in a row and, and after, you know, it's just it's kind of repetitive, repetitive and it, it doesn't really take a lot of intellect. You know, it doesn't challenge you. It's just you just do tricks and whatnot. But, you know, it, you know with Skate 2, 
uh, the controls aren't that difficult, but they are a little more involved, and, and you know, there's a lot that you can do, and um, I don't know. And, and actually, it's funny, one of the really nice things about Skate 2 is you can actually get off your board and walk to places. So if you get stuck somewhere, you're not stuck there forever, whereas in the past, a lot of games, if you end Dead up in end, some huh? little place and you, there's no way for you to get you out, get and out. you just have to you start over. Start over. So yeah, so that was that was nice and, and definitely eased the frustration. And so that's called Skate. Skate two. Skate two. Yeah. Okay, I have to tell the boys to check that one they, out. What's it? Should. What's it rated? Do you know? Uh, teen. Teen. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. What about any films? Have you had any time to check uh, out any yeah, new films since gosh. Sundance over? Yeah. Well, now that Sundance is over, which I only saw something like 35 films. Out, oh, that's which all. Was, uh, yeah, that's what it. was your favorite during Sundance? Did you have a favorite? Uh, my favorite during Sundance, uh, The Cove, I loved, uh, which was the dolphin, the Japanese slaughtering of dolphin <laughs> documentary, which is actually something that I think everyone needs to see because it's a unique documentary in that at the end you feel like you can actually do something because it's only to one. make a difference? Yeah, it's only one group of people, it's one place, you know, and it's so senseless uh, what they're doing. I mean, there's, there's no reason for it that. Um, it, it really motivates you, and rather, to take than, action. rather than feeling hopeless, you feel like, okay, yeah, we can actually do something here. This is something that we can change. Um, I also loved uh, Five Hundred Days of Summer, which is a great sort of romantic comedy, but kind of not a romantic comedy. Um, Moon, I thought was great, which was science fiction. I loved uh, The Clone Returns Home, which is also science fiction, but that one's from Japan. Um, 35 movies, that's amazing. Yeah. Have you seen any at the theaters uh, lately? We, you know, we've got, uh, you've got Che that's opening up in Salt Lake this week. It's in two parts. Uh, altogether, it's four and a half hours. Where's that going to be playing? It's going to be at the Tower, or uh, no, it's at Broadway, at the Broadway. Um, it's the f Part one, uh, I enjoyed a lot more than part two, but that's partially because part one is where he's successful. It's, it's where he, you know, they go into Cuba and they... They, uh, you know, they do overthrow the government and, and that sort of thing. Whereas part two is about his later uh, things, where he goes into South America and fails. So in one, you you know, you kind of have this natural rise, and, and then the the second one is basically him banging his head against the wall until they. The second one's just totally depressing. Yeah, the second Aww. one's really rather depressing because we all know. Well, I don't, it ends poorly. Let's just say <laughs> okay, that. Okay, so don't give away the ending. I won't give away the ending, <laughs> but if you know your history, you know how it ends. But um, you also have the Pink Panther 2 this week, which is probably good if you're 10 or younger. And what movie was that? Pink Panther 2. Pink Panther 2. That's okay. what I would have guessed. But if you have any, rec <laughs> if you remember the originals, have any love for the Peter Sellers stuff, this is going to be a, a disaster for you. Um, what about Frost Nixon? Did you see it? Chris Frost gave Nixon, it two yes. thumbs up. Yes, Frost Nixon, I, I liked quite a bit. Um, you know, Ron Howard's probably getting a little more. Uh, credit than he deserves. It, it's the sort of film that kind of directs itself, but the performances in it are all great. Um, the ensemble cast is uh, is phenomenal, um, and you know if it wins Best Picture, I'm not going to complain. It's not my vote for Best, best Picture, but it's it's definitely uh, deserving of of the attention. Have you seen any movies lately that you would say, oh, you know, nomination for Best Picture? Uh, no, because it's You're giving it some more time. Well, well, I mean, because what they have up there, you know, most of that stuff I was able to see uh, in December. So most of the most of the things that are up for Best Picture I've I've seen long enough ago that it feels like they're older films. But you know, of the five, only the reader strikes me as as undeserving. Um, I thought I, I really feel like the reader missed the point of the book when they adapted it to the film. It is. It it is amazing how many times you know somebody reads a book and says, "Well, the movie wasn't that much like yeah. it," and they really do so many times, you and, know, try to change things in the movies. And the book is a phenomenal book, and it's an important book, and the story is great. And I think that a lot of people who are really high on the movie are actually really high on the book, mm -hmm. and the movie experience isn't isn't the same. It, it, it loses uh, the focus that the book has. Uh, um, and, and the first half is filled with it, it. What people remember from this film is mostly a lot of naked people, honestly, because the first half is kind of uh, not necessarily what you want to take home. No, no, and it, it completely overshadows the rest of the film.